Hey, good morning, fam. What's going on? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, following Alabama's victory over Tennessee on Saturday, 48 to 17. Alabama Crimson Tide now 5 and 0 on the season. Want to talk about some observations as I usually do on Sunday, and I hope, hope you're making some time to spend uh, some time with your loved ones today as well. All right, and uh, I opened this observation piece up with the impact of losing Jalen Watt out for what could be the remainder of the season with the ankle injury. And what an unfortunate injury to, you know, have taken place on one of the most explosive players in all of college football. Happened on the very first play of the game against Tennessee. As you saw, he was returning a kickoff, got cut, caught underneath a defender, and, um, you know, looks like uh, he could be out what's the remainder of the season, had surgery. Uh, last night, Nick Saban said it was very similar to the injury that Kenyon Drake suffered. So hopefully... A, Jalen Waddle's going to be okay in the long term, which I think he's going to be. And, um, you know, B, thoughts and uh, prayers up for his family as, uh, you know, he gets through this. But it's a, a gigantic loss, and you kind of look at the injuries that Alabama has had against uh, Tennessee throughout the last couple of years. It's kind of interesting, right? You had Eddie Jackson, um, and then you had um, Jalen Hurts, and then you had Tua Tungabailoa, and then you have Jalen Waddle, kind of all three ankles, which is pretty interesting over the last couple of years. Pretty strange, to be honest. Um, Jalen Waddle's second on the team in total yards gain with 621. That's behind Najee Harris, who has 742 yards. This isn't counting Mac Jones, the quarterback. Uh, and will he come back in 2021? I think the short answer is no. I think Jalen Waddle is a type of player that's a first-round type player. And I think um, after the season, he'll kind of, you know, they'll give him his NFL draft grade, which I think will be extremely high. I mean, let's face it. Jalen Waddle, every single thing that he brings to the table screams a guy that's going to be an impact player on Sunday. I think he's just a guy who's going to be super productive. So, um, in my opinion, I think we saw the last of Jalen Waddle wearing a crimson and white uniform, which is really unfortunate. But, um, you know, I think he's going to be okay in the future considering that he is a guy that will certainly be an impact player on Sunday. Who will step up in his place? Well, um, we kind of were wondering who would be that fourth wide receiver, and we saw Slade Bolden. He stepped up last night. Six receptions, 94 yards. Um, I think a lot of people are going to drop, are going to point to the drop that he had uh, in the end zone. Um, but other than that, I, I thought he played fantastic. I mean, this is a guy who was the Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year, played quarterback, and he runs exceptional routes. I think he has uh, the ability to still keep Alabama's offense going. And last night, six receptions with 94 yards. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough to replace Jalen Waddle. It's going to be tough to replace a guy of that caliber. But I think Slade Bolden is going to be um, just what Alabama needs um, when you kind of look to who's next. I think you're also going to see Javon Baker um, really step up. He's a freshman that we've all been waiting to see. We haven't really seen Xavier Williams yet. And then you have some other freshmen, uh, Treshawn Holden, uh, Dow Jones Bell, guys that can step up right now when you kind of look to who's next at the receiver position for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, second point I wanted to touch on is the continued flex by Mac Jones. I mean, what he's doing right now is really incredible. 115 of 146 passing, 78%. 1,900 yards, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions. Surprisingly, didn't throw a touchdown against Tennessee. Um, that's the only game that he has not thrown a touchdown this season. Um, but his overall efficiency is really incredible. I, I think what he's able to do from uh, a schematic standpoint, leading Steve Sarkeesian's offense, has really been um, unbelievable. I, I think, you know, considering, you know, everybody saw, you know, Tua Tungavailoa last season, last couple seasons, and I think they're worried about, you know, would the quarterback play continue to be at this high level? And Mac Jones has absolutely continued, um, you know, the tradition now of these incredible quarterbacks that are coming through Alabama. What he's doing right now, enjoy it because he's playing at an extremely high level. I'll put the side-by-side -side comparison to Trevor Lawrence as I do um, throughout the season. And, and just to show you what Mac Jones is doing at, at this level, and I think when you talk about Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones, a lot of people are going to continue to do that right now. You have to look at the quality of competition, who these guys are each facing. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence would still be very productive against uh, the teams that Alabama is playing. 
um, because, you know, he, he's a quality quarterback, but I'm, I'm just p- painting the picture. I mean, Mac Jones just um, a couple weeks ago went against Georgia and, you know, was lights out throwing for over 400 yards. So I think Mac Jones certainly needs to be considered as not only one of the top quarterbacks in the SEC, but one of the top quarterbacks in the entire country. Overall efficiency rating is just really incredible for Mac Jones and, and what he's doing for the Alabama Crimson Tide through five games. Um, point three, I know you guys aren't going to like this. And, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Where is this pass rush? Where is it? All right. Look, these are the stats from the game against Tennessee. Guess how many quarterback hurries last night? One. Just one quarterback hurry. And that's from Brian Branch. Okay. No pass rush from the defensive line or from the outside linebackers. All right. I'm not a defensive coordinator. But, I mean, that is unacceptable in my opinion. Zero quarterback sacks. Okay. Those are going to be what could eventually stop this team from winning the ultimate goal of a national championship. When you can't get heat on the quarterback, the quarterback is going to have time to make reads downfield to make plays with his feet. Barmore was doubled all night. LeBron Ray is still out. But what is going on, fam? Where is the pass rush? Okay. I want to hear from you in the comment box. Is this your biggest worry about this team going forward? On the defensive side, it's like there's no pass rush whatsoever. Very, very concerning as you kind of look at the midway point of this season. And when you kind of look at the defense overall, I think there's a lot of things that you could point to, but there was zero pass rush. Okay. Next point is kind of going off the first, going off this last point with no pass rush, you're going to allow the quarterback to have time to beat you over the top. Battle got smoked. Patrick Sertan got smoked. Daniel Wright got beat. A better quarterback than Garantano is going to expose Alabama if they do not get pressure on the quarterback. You got Mike Leach coming up next. I know the quarterback Costello was thrown for, I don't know, like eight or nine interceptions or whatever. Point is, they like to throw the ball. Point is, you got Terrell Shavers coming up, right? A guy who used to be at Alabama, now playing for Mississippi State. They love to go to the air. And if you don't get pressure... Against not, not even Mississippi State, any single team, even LSU. Look at LSU, the points that they put up, right? And he's, as you look to, to even better teams down, down the road, an Ohio State potential in the playoffs, a Clemson Tiger team. I know that's all rat poison because the next important team is Mississippi State. But my point is the defense was beaten over the top, and I point to the fact that there was no pass rush. Okay, if the quarterback is comfortable, he's going to be able to make throws downfield. Now, yes, it's on battle. It's on, on Sartain. Um, and, and on Daniel Wright to make plays in the secondary. But last last night, I think, was the first time that we saw those guys get beat. And it worries me, covering Alabama, that that is another vulnerability. What about you? Sound off in the comment box. Um, next point, the freshman report. Another guy in the secondary who I think has really been one of the top overall freshmen on this entire team is Malachi Moore. Or at least on the defensive side of the ball, right? So many guys on the offense. But on the defensive side, Malachi Moore, my goodness, he comes to play, certainly the truth. Very good in coverage. Thought he made some good plays last night. And I think the the biggest takeaway about Malachi Moore is this. He plays opportunistic football. Two interceptions on the season. And then we saw the strip. And then he also, with the scoop and score. So he's playing, you know, he's making plays. Plain and simple. And I love him at the star position, and I think he's certainly contributing at the high level. Now, look, my last point, I'm not dogging on the secondary overall because I think Patrick Sertan and Josh Job have done a good job, but I'm saying if there's if there's no pass rush, then those guys are going to be caught. And I think Malachi Moore, when I kind of talk about the freshman right now, he's one of those guys that has been playing, um, you know, above his ability. I mean, this guy's only a freshman. Wasn't even here last season, and he's playing at such a high level. So, um not completely hating on this on the secondary, and certainly like what I see from Malachi Moore. Um, got another sample size of Bryce Young last night. Um, this was, you know, the first time that we really got to see him in action since that Missouri game. I know he played a little bit against Texas A&M, but that was just like, you know, in the final minutes or whatever. Uh, came in with 10 minutes in the game, was three for five. I thought he threw um, three, four, actually, very good passes. So he had a uh, pass to the outside right, which was to uh, John Mechie, pass over the center, and then he had that pass... Um, which w- was a slant. It was a dart right to Slade Bolden. Slade Bolden dropped it. Do you think that's on, on Bryce Young or was it on Slade Bolden? Was it thrown behind or could Slade not, you know, did he just drop it? 
I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess I'll have to watch that, the game again. I usually watch the game again on Sunday nights, and um, I'll come back with that. But either way, I thought he played – um, you know, I played I thought he played a lot better and I, I thought I saw a lot more confidence from him in this game. He he had the, the starting offensive line, he had Najee Harrison there. And when you have, you know, the, the starting offensive set with you, I think that's gonna provide more confidence. So I, I liked what I saw from Bryce Young. Still want to see more of a sample size. I mean, kid hasn't even thrown for 20 passes yet this season. So um but but in the small glimpses that we've seen, I do like what I saw uh from Bryce Young against Tennessee. Um, redshirt freshman, Trey Sanders, I thought he looked better compared to that game against Missouri. Against Missouri, he had nine carries for one yard. Uh, against Tennessee, he had seven carries for 39 yards. He he had a longest run of 20 yards, which, which looked great. I think we got to see some of that shift that he has. We'd like to see him hit the hole harder. Um, I, th I think Brian Robinson, I know we're talking about freshmen, but I just want to talk about uh, Brian Robinson. Uh, he's been hitting the hole like Trey Sanders needs to. If Trey Sanders wants to, you know, um, you know, get the get his game to where it could be. He's got a model after Najee Harris and Brad Robinson. I think he will. I mean, this is only what the second or third game that he's played this season. I, I liked what I saw from Trey Sanders uh, last night. Uh, Drew Sanders, uh, write this down, fam. He changed his number from number sixteen to number twenty. Um, I, he almost blocked a punt. And I was like, who is number twenty? Who is that? And then uh, he made another special teams play, and then I, the you know the camera showed that it was Drew Sanders. So. I think he's playing at a, at a good level right now. Uh, a good level meaning special teams. I don't, you know, we haven't seen him too many times come in as an outside linebacker, but in terms of playing with a lot of intensity, making an open field tackle, he's doing what he's supposed to do. So Drew Sanders now, number 20 from number 16. Uh, Brian Branch, um, he's getting a lot of playing time in the secondary. He had a, a quarterback hurry, but I, I think he missed a sure interception. Um, he had a couple other opportunities where he missed on. So, you, you know, these guys are freshmen. They need improvement, but I'm glad to see Brian Branch getting on the field. There's not a lot of freshmen at all playing this year for Alabama. It's an all-SEC schedule. We really haven't seen this before because in, in the past years that I've covered Alabama, you always have those, the, the Colorado State, the New Mexico State, whatever. So you can get a bunch of freshmen in, get them rotating, but... There's not a lot of freshmen playing. There's not a lot of too deep playing. It's mostly just the starters. Next point I want to talk about is Will Reichard. Um, I mean, my goodness. is um, Alabama has a kicker, fam. Six for six on the season. Longest of 52 yards. Uh, last night he was two for two against Tennessee. <laughs> and this, I mean, I, I know it's just a PAT, but Alabama's been accustomed to missing PATs uh, during the season. Right now, Will Reichard, 32 of 32. Yeah, you know what that is. That's 100%. Okay. Will Riker playing with a lot of confidence. It seems like he's like, he's welcoming the challenge, right? I like to see his um, his overall composure. It seems like he's just like wants to get it. I like the mentality that you can at least see from him. Charlie Scott was Alabama's punter last night. Alabama, um, for the first four games, went to Sam Johnson. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Ty Perrine. Um, but it was Charlie Scott, and that was something that I talked about even, you know, three hours before the game. I got, you know, kind of the scoop on that, that Charlie Scott would be the puncher for Alabama. Two punts, 69 yards. The average is 34.5. I mean, they were, they were both inside the 20, you know, and what's crazy is Sam Johnson, his punts are 30, uh, an average of 35.4 or something like that. So almost a similar average. I don't know if Charlie Scott's going to be the punter. I don't know if Sam Johnson's going to be the punter. I don't know what's going on with Ty Perrine. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that, but I think long story short, Alabama is still looking for a, a punter. Maybe they don't have one. I don't know, but I know in emergency situations that will Reichard can also punt just saying, all right. Um, next point up I want to talk about is Najee Harris. Uh, I mean, his campaign, he, he almost gets kind of lost in the shuffle of what he's doing this year, just because Alabama's quarterback, Mac Jones is playing just through the roof. Um, 20 carries against Tennessee, 97 yards. Um, you know, three touchdowns against the Vols, now has 14 touchdowns on the year. He had 31 carries for 151 yards against Georgia with another touchdown. I mean, think about that, 51 carries over the last two games. They're certainly distributing the football to Najee Harris, getting a ton, a ton of carries. Love it. Um, he has 742 all-purpose yards. You know how Mac Jones likes to go to him out of the backfield. Um, 585 yards on the season rushing, 14 touchdowns, 5.8 average per carry. I mean, uh, Najee Harris completely, uh, 
you know, doing his thing and just running hard. I love how he uses his, uh, you know, the, that kind of stiff arm ability. A lot of people like to compare him to almost like a Derrick Henry that he's just like throwing dudes around. He plays with a lot of physicality. I really like what Najee Harris brings to the table. I thought he's been playing fantastic. You know what? It, it did bug me out, though, to kind of look at Najee Harris's facial expression during the game against Tennessee. You could just see that, you know, losing a player like Jalen Waddell, it, it's an emotional loss. Yes, I think Alabama is going to be able to move forward and still be productive on the offensive side without Jalen Waddle. But I think from an emotional standpoint, these guys grind. They they respect the craft of one another. They see what it takes to get to this level. And, you know, you're always just a play away from your season being over. And you can't think about that. You have to play 100% every single time. But Najee Harris's facial expression last night was heartbreaking. I think that's kind of the mood for the entire Alabama Crimson Tide football fan base. Just to know that um, Jalen Waddle's not going to be, um, you know, suited up with the team going forward. And, uh, I mean, it, it was heartbreaking. That was uh, tough news for all everybody who uh, watches college football, everybody who enjoys the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, last point, let me hear from you in the comment box. When you look at Alabama's schedule, the remaining regular season schedule, you got Mississippi State, the game will be back in Tuscaloosa, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time on Saturday, going up against Mike Leach. Um, what do you guys think about that game? And then after that, you got a redemption game. Alabama will be uh, taking on LSU. That's after a bye week. So that game will be on Saturday, November 14th. And then Alabama will take on Kentucky. That's a new addition to the schedule. That'll be back at Brian Denny's schedule on November 21st. And then uh, you got Auburn on November 28th. And then Arkansas uh, to end the regular season. So Mississippi State, LSU, Kentucky, Auburn, Arkansas, uh, are the remaining games in the second half of the schedule for the Alabama Crimson Tide? Um, let me know what you think about that second half of the schedule. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate you guys joining me during the pregame show, the postgame show, and all the support right here on BamaInsider.com. Please be sure and hit the thumbs up button on this video. Please be sure and tone turn on all notifications so you always are notified when we drop videos right here on BamaInsider.com. I sincere, sincerely appreciate you guys being a subscriber at Bama Insider. And now is the final um, call for you guys to sign up for the promo at Bama Insider. You get a year for just $12. The promo code is Bama12. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Sunday with your family. My name is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com reporting to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Thanks for listening, fam.